Hello, welcome to another Nick Jitsu video. Today we're going to be looking at pentatonic chords. Pentatonic chords? Yeah, pentatonic chords. You heard correctly. I'm going to be going over their construction, how I kind of discovered them, and um, what uses you can put them to. We'll play them over a blues, because a blues is kind of like, you know, everybody plays the blues. Do you know, I knew a blues player once from Echel Fechen, and he went down to his local crossroads to do a deal with the devil. The devil turned up and said, uh, all right, I'll make you the best guitar player in the world, but I want your soul. And he just thought about it for a minute. He went, hmm, a bit expensive. What can you give me for 50p? And the devil turned around and went, well, for 50p, I'll make you the best bass player in the world. Oh, oh. So when I was younger and I was first taught how to harmonize a major scale, if you take an A major scale, you take the first note and you skip one, go to the next note, you skip one, you go to the next note, skip one, go to the next note, you get the seventh, and then you're back to the start again. When I was first taught that, I thought that was quite clever. And um, I thought, well, can you apply that to the pentatonic scale? Same thing, I, I took a, a note, skip one, and then another note, skip one, another note, skip one. And you end up coming out with chords like that. Now, they get really awkward to play when you get to these ones. So what I did was just work out just bottom four notes or bottom three notes. The reason for that was that um, when I was at school, um, I was taught by a keyboard player how to play guitar which is weird, which is why I've got a slightly weird way of thinking of guitar. And um, he used to play just with four fingers and get all these chords popping out. And that's where I got the idea for doing, all, for doing all the pentatonic stuff. What I'm not gonna do today is I'm not gonna name every chord. Um, a couple of names might pop out here and there, but I'm not gonna name the chords specifically because um, depending on what the bass note is and your perspective on that chord at the time, it can have a few different names. And I know that there's always that person that you'll meet when you play a chord, oh, that's a minor or 11th, or that's a sus4 or something like that. And they'll argue and argue and argue why it's that chord. They're a bunch of into something that you can use for a fondue. So for now, I'm just gonna to refer to things as shape one, shape two, the same way we do with the pentatonics. And um, if you wanna get into the actual names of things and the function of these chords later on, then just put a comment down in the comments. So why make it difficult? Most of you know the pentatonic. If you don't know the pentatonic, then um, I've already done a video on pentatonics. You can look in the do that or the thing. So many chords you think you're gonna get out of the pentatonic scale. Look at this as the shape one chord, because this is kind of at the bottom of shape one. Then you end up with A, D, G, and C, like that. And then if we go up to shape number two, then, then we end up with C, E, A, and D. And then we're up to shape number three. Oh. Then we end up with D, G, C, and E, like that. Now, you can either play it like that with the three fingers, or I tend to bar with one finger. I don't know if you can see that. I can actually bend my finger the opposite way when I'm doing that. So, so I get that chord, and then we've got another straight line here. We've got E, A, D, G for shape four. And then for shape five, the bottom of shape five, we've got G, C, E, and A. So we've got five chords. One, two, three, four, five. That would be the ones with the root note on the E string. You can also do exactly the same thing, but start on the A string and go to the B string. So you get these chords, you get D, G, C, and E. Then you'd be up to the next shape. So you'd have, um, what's that? It's e, A, D, G. 
You get on to the next one, and you've got like a major six type chord. So you've got G, C, E, and A. Like that. And then another chord type voicing. We've got A, D, G, C. And then we're up to the last voicing, number five. So you've got C, E, A, D. So all together, that sounds like this. Like that. And then the top four strings from the, you know, put the root note on the D string, then same thing, you've got all in a line. So here you'd be playing a G, C, E, A. Like that. And then you go up to the next one and you'd be playing A, D, G, C. <laughs> there you go. It's late, and um, yeah, I've been drinking lots of beer. Well, one. Then we're on to one of my favorite ones, which is C, E, A, D, like that. And then next we're on to uh, D, G, C, E. And then lastly, another familiar shape. We've got the E, A, G, uh, D, G. Yeah. So, all together. Like that. You can learn it kind of linearly, like we've done in a straight line, or you can put them all together. That kind of idea. And it doesn't really matter how you do it. It's the purpose of these, these chords, is to kind of take you away from the usual and not have anything to, to, to play. If you watch any keyboard player, they'll be moving within any kind of any kind of chord structure, creating um, either little harmonies or little melodies underneath what you're playing when you're comping. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play this over a blues because most people play blues. And um, I'm not a great blues player. So instead of getting like a really good blues player like Eric Gales or um, Gary Clark or Robin Ford or something like that, um, I've ended up with Egypt Boy Andrew. Um, say hello. And uh, he's gonna play lead and um, I'm gonna play the rhythm underneath. But I'm only gonna use the chords from the pentatonic and you'll see how they work. can you do with these chords I hear you cry? Cry! Well I'll tell you. Now on my other video that I talked about the pentatonics, have I mentioned I did another video on the pentatonics? Yes! yes. Aye. On this video I talk about how you take a pentatonic scale and you can actually use it to create Dorian and Aeolian sounds um, by using just an L shape. Now if we take A and we want to make a, a Dorian kind of sound, we choose the notes of A, B and D because that's the three minor chords that are, if, if A's the Dorian, we're in the key of G major, and the three minor chords would be A, B, and E. Um, if we're playing an A Aeolian, then it's the sixth of C major, and the minor chords in C major are A minor, D minor, E minor. So you've got an L shape going that way. Now you can do the same with the chords, in the pentatonic. So if I want to play a Dorian kind of sound, I can use all the chords from A minor pentatonic, like this, and also B minor pentatonic. So I end up with lots of these kind of things. And then,
So there's lots of chords that are kind of interchangeable. And did you notice this? The top note of each chord, that's the A from the A minor. That's from the B minor. It's from A minor, B minor. Now I can change to A minor and B minor here. And then A minor and B minor. Again, and then A minor and B minor again. Back to A minor. You see on the top note, Whichever chord you use, if you use it in, in a set way, you're going to get the A Dorian scale. If you do the same for A Aeolian, then what you get is you'd interchange between A and D. So we're also going to add in an E minor because I want that note just to prove a point. So we've got A minor, D minor, E minor, and then A minor, and then D minor, like that. And as we go up, uh, we're on A minor, and then we're on D minor, and then we can go to A minor, and then A minor, or we can think of that as D minor there, A minor, D minor. They're all kind of similar, and you'll see. We've got an F in there instead of an F sharp, because it's Aeolian. If you do your theory correctly, then A Dorian and A Aeolian both have an E in them, both have the E minor. So as a good hack for kind of um, trying to sound jazzy or trying to just, if you only know like a couple of pentatonic scales or a couple of pentatonic shapes, um, I presume you can change key with them. So you can play in an A pentatonic and you can play an E pentatonic, a fifth away. So if you think about a power chord, second note of a power chord, that's your fifth. So that's shape number four in E. Now we can do the same with the chords. Like that. We can play that kind of thing. We're just mucking about with A and E. What that does is that expands your chord vocabulary by lots and lots but we're only kind of using one thing. I appreciate it takes a long time to learn all these, these chords, but what you can do is you can just look at the simple shapes. If you base it on the chord shapes you already know, most guitarists know that as a minor shape, and this is a minor shape. So you just look at the chord that's there on that minor shape, and the equivalent, that's the kind of A equivalent up here. And then the same with E, and the same with A, like that. So, and learn the, the couple of little chords around the A chord, add the E, and you all of a sudden you Every, anything that would sound normally just, you know, playing like that, you can... You can start moving it around a little bit and you get more of that kind of neo-soul kind of thing that's very popular at the minute. So why learn loads and loads of chords and all that kind of thing when you only really need to know the pentatonic scale and a few bar chords and then mix the two some little hacks here and there using the, the fifth away, and um, all of a sudden you sound like a competent jazz guitar player playing rock or funk or whatever. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you managed to get something out of that and look at the pentatonic scales slightly differently. There's a lot more you can do with them than you think. Um, and we haven't even scratched the surface of what you can do with pentatonic chords yet. Um, don't forget my album Hyper Reels out, and I do play the odd blues lick on there without the help of um, Egypt Boy Andrew. So don't forget to do the like with the thing and the what's it and the press the bell and from me and the white lady, Slanchava, thank you very much and we'll see you on the next one.
happy this afternoon Cause my alarm clock had the blues 